We are back for another episode of Love It There. We hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hope you didn't miss us too much on our week off. I'm sure you didn't. <laughs> um, but in our time away, we did announce our first ever giveaway winner, which was super exciting. Um, hopefully you entered that. It was it was super fun, we thought. <laughs> yeah, we thought. Uh, yeah, our giveaway thought. winner, your stuff should be coming soon by the time you're listening to this it should already be in the mail so i was packaging it up today while wow we recorded we're so efficient okay so for today's episode we're doing something a little bit different we are doing a little q a episode so we put a question box uh, question box on our instagram story last week or earlier this week um and so we're gonna just run through a bunch of questions that we got that you guys submitted so. Yeah, you guys did a great job. You submitted a lot of good ones and ones that I haven't really thought about that I had to take some time to think about. So it was good. Yeah, I'm excited. All right. Yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Let's do it. So question number one, we had a question about tips on travel research. This person said, I never know where to start when trip planning. Okay, so I would say talk to people who have been there before. If you know people who have taken a trip there, just get their thoughts on like what they would do differently, what they really liked. And if you don't know anybody that's been to this particular place you're trying to go, look for like travel vlogs or YouTube videos for people that are locals or who lived there for an extended period of time because they're going to give you information on things other than just like the top hitting tourist destinations. And then, yeah, just like find a few things that you want to do. And I usually like pull out Google Maps and like star things that I want to go see or restaurants that I want to go eat at or whatever. And then I try to book my accommodations like pretty centrally located for all of those little things and kind of start there. But yeah, I don't know. What about you, Hallie? Yeah, I agree with that. I also, just from my personal experience when I was abroad, we, the group that I was with relied really heavily on TikTok, which I think is like a very generational thing. I'm not even on TikTok, but my friends that were on it had really good finds that they found through videos on TikTok. And I think the good thing about videos on like Instagram reels or any kind of social media platform like that is a lot of times they're like pretty niche or like hidden gems that aren't going to be found on like your typical Google search when you like Google best things to do in this city. They're going to be things that are like, oh, look at the look for these hidden spots in this city or um, like restaurants that only the locals know about. And then they'll like post stuff about that. So we found some really good restaurants, especially was really helpful to find stuff on TikTok. The next question is, what is our next scheduled trip? And wherever it is, will you take me with you? Yes. <laughs> I'm always course. looking for a travel buddy. <laughs> I am going to Dallas in April for a wedding. So excited. Don't have my flights booked yet, but I definitely need to do that. I wish I was going on a trip sooner. That feels so far away. That but is far. I know. This winter is going to be rough not having anything to really get me through, but maybe I'll have to plan something. But <laughs> I'm really saving up my excitement for this May. I'm going to the south of France, like Nice area, and I'm super, super, super excited. My flight was less than $200, and we're using That's hotel crazy. points to, yeah, to stay in hotels for free. So we'll get into that a little bit later about how you guys can do that as well. So this France trip is basically free. So I'm excited. That's insane. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, for me, my next big trip is, surprise, surprise, I'm going back to Nashville. <laughs> yes, um, we love nobody, that for you. nobody should be shocked because this is going to be my like sixth or seventh time there in the past like three years. I'm going for New Year's Eve because two of my roommates are – have birthdays one January 1st one is January 3rd so we're going down to celebrate their birthdays we're all super excited um and then I also just booked a flight on Black Friday to 
it's not going to sound that exciting. I'm going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, but don't sleep on Tulsa, okay? It's going to be a great time. I'm going to actually visit one of my friends that I was in Spain with. So I'm going to see her. And then my brother actually happens to be racing there that weekend. So I'm going to get to watch him race, which is always exciting because he doesn't do it too often anymore. So I'm excited to see him do that. Um, and then I also got $200 off my flight thanks to the travel credit card, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So stay tuned for some money saving tips. Oh, yeah. We got that's, you. That's next. The next. So the next question is, do you exchange currency oh, or just do electronic transactions? The answer to this is travel credit cards, you guys. 100%. If I, I could talk this whole episode, <laughs> I could talk your ear off about travel credit cards. There are two things that I am so passionate about. <laughs> one, well, I maybe won't say the first one. It has to do women's with health. Women's health. Women's, women's health. health related. So, and then also like travel credit cards and travel hacking. So yeah, I told Hallie to get a travel credit card before she studied abroad. You used your points to pay for your flight, right? Um, It covered a lot of my flight. Yes. I got, I think I saved like seven or $800. Yeah. So when you open a new travel credit card, you get, there's this minimum spend bonus. You have to just spend a certain amount of money and then you get this like huge welcome bonus of this huge amount of points. And so for the most part, that can cover the majority, if not all of a major flight, like Hallie's covered most of her flight over Mm -hmm. to Europe. And the benefit of this travel card when you're there is that there's no foreign transaction fee. So you can just swipe that credit card, not have to worry about getting cash, losing your cash, whatever. So that is the answer to all your problems. I promise. I have four travel credit cards and oh. two other <laughs> cashback cards. <laughs> and I'm Okay. I just more. have one and I'm fine. So <laughs> we just got, okay. So yeah, whatever. I could literally talk about this all day, but I need to stop. But that's the yeah. answer. Don't worry about exchanging your currency. Just get a travel cre- credit card that has no foreign transaction fees. Yeah, I was so thankful I had my travel credit card this summer because all my friends were always having to worry about like, okay, when we go this weekend, how much cash do I need to get out of the ATM before we leave? Like how much do I think I'm going to spend? And they were constantly having to go back to the ATM to get out more cash because they didn't want all the transaction fees on their credit cards. And I literally never had to worry about that. And it was so nice because I could just use my credit card just like I normally would in the U.S. And it was so convenient. So 100% recommend. There's just so many other perks with it too. You can get like airport lounge access. You get um, like insurance on like lost baggage stuff. and just You get hotel credits. Yes, absolutely. There's so many different benefits depending on which travel credit card you get. That's why I have multiple because I mix and match where all my benefits lie. So yeah. If you guys which one questions. which ones do you recommend? Okay, let's so, be as specific as possible. Okay, here we go. I love this. So, <laughs> Chase Sapphire Preferred is the one that Hallie has too. That's a mm-hmm. good starter card. It's really easy to meet the minimum spend bonus. Those points are super transferable to a lot of airlines. So, that one's really really good. And then I also have Capital One Venturex Reward. That's like Jennifer Garner's a spoke spokesperson for that one. There's lots of commercials about that credit card. Yeah. That's super, super easy to just rack up the points for because it's two times cash back on every single category. There's more points options for other categories, but just like the baseline, you're getting at least two times points on everything. So that's super easy to rack up points with. And then I have a Delta card because Detroit is a Delta hub. So we're flying Delta a lot. Um, And then we just got a hotel specific travel credit card. And that's what's paying for our hotels in France is just just that sign on bonus for that credit card that we got. So don't you have to pay like fees for everyone that you have? Okay. Yes. But I could literally tell you how the fees are worth it. Like I could go into so much detail, but the fees, they pay for themselves. Like I don't have the most expensive fee one that I have, I think is $250. And so that's one that like the bonuses. That's like one night in a nice hotel. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. So it's like literally those annual fees pay for themselves. Yeah. For sure. True. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question. We're going to move away from the credit card. So sorry if you guys Barely, though. tuned out. <laughs> Barely. 
Um, okay. So the question is, should I splurge on business class or stick to coach talking about flights? Um, my answer is that I'm broke. So I've literally never even <laughs> considered a business class ticket in my life. So I can't really like give you a good argument on that, but Kelsey, what do you have to say? Okay. Use your points and miles. So the only time that I've ever flown anything other than just like basic economy was getting a status boost. So like Delta, we have status. And so you can just automatically get bumped up or just use your points because I would personally never, I don't know. I don't know that like a lot of the first class or business class seats are worth the price tag for those seats. But when you're using points, it feels free. So it's like, <laughs> just use those to get a little, little bump up. So I've never flown like across like to Europe or anything in like anything other than economy because I haven't had enough points or, you know, we're just using our money to pay for that. But someday I will fly a long flight and use points to get a fully flat lay down seat. <laughs> that is my goal. But yeah, so these credit cards, they give you these like points that you can transfer to airlines and use those. Or honestly, you can just sign up for like an account or like a rewards membership for all these programs. So like I've signed up for like every single airline, every single hotel, it's free to make an account. And if you stay in a property, a hotel property, or if you take a flight with that airline, then you're earning points. And so that's free to do. And it's slow to earn points that way if you're not traveling a ton, but you never know when you might like randomly have enough points to pay for a flight or something. So right. you might as well do that. And there's like all these random ways that you can earn more points to like Marriott, for instance, they have this program called Eat Around Town where you get free Marriott points just for going out to eat at certain restaurants. And oh, cool. like I've earned over 10,000 Marriott points just for like going out to eat at places we would normally do. Yeah. And it's automatic. You just like sign up for it and you're going to get the points. So I don't know. There's just like random ways where you can earn a lot of points. So might as well. It's free to do it. Yeah. Free money. Free money. We love it. <laughs> okay. Next question is any tips on finding cheaper flights? So the one that's been recommended to me is called Skyscanner. I've never personally used it myself, so I'm not super familiar with it. But one of my friends has talked about it and she said that she's able to find like the cheapest flights on there. Couple things that I've used are there's this program called Fair Drop, which is these two you travel YouTubers that I like. They created this company where basically you plug in your home airport and then it's free to make an account for US flights and it'll just like random like every day you can log on and see like the cheapest flights from your home airport to wherever you want to go oh, and cool. it like automatically searches for these cheap deals and will just notify you like hey we found this cheap flight from Detroit heading to Tulsa or wherever you want to go <laughs> and it'll notify you of that and then something else this is by those same YouTubers they have this travel newsletter that they send out it's Monday through Friday but they're constantly, I mean, the point of this newsletter is to be like searching the internet for all these deals and cheap flights. And that's how we got our France flights for cheap because in this newsletter, they were like, oh, if you transfer your points from this bank to this airline, you can get flights to Europe for like 11,000 points, which is like nothing. That's so cheap. And so because of this newsletter, I knew we could do that. And so that's how we got our flights. France flights so cheap. Why so, was that a deal? That seems so random. They just literally these airlines have like constantly airlines are doing deals and promotions where you get a bonus, like a 25% bonus if you transfer your points to this airline. And so your points are worth that much more. And then you can get these flights for cheap. So, I mean, it's overwhelming because of the amount of airlines and banks and everything that could be doing these but this newsletter called daily drop which i'll put a link in the episode description if you want to sign up for it i highly recommend it they do all the research for you and just like every day they pop out here are the good deals that you need to be aware of that's so, so cool that's a really good idea yeah 
Okay. Next question. What time of year should one travel abroad? Okay. So we're really moving away from all that stuff. Sorry. The travel (laughs) hacking and credit cards and points. That was really boring to you. I geek out on that big time, but yeah, moving away from that. Next question is what time of year should one travel abroad? So I would say like the shoulder seasons, if you like look that up online, it's basically like spring and fall. So we went to Switzerland in September and I cannot recommend that enough. That was like perfect. All the summer tourists had left. The weather was still so warm. It was so great, less crowds. So, and then we're going to France in May and the opposite shoulder season. So I'll let you guys know how that compares. Yeah, I've only gone in the summer, so that's all that I can really speak to. And it was obviously great for when we, like, wanted to go to the beach or, um, I mean, we were able to get, like, sun every day, never had to worry about rain, which was really nice. But definitely bad for sightseeing and walking around just because it was so hot and so sunny every single day. It was also so crowded I think this past summer people said that it was like the most Mm -hmm. busy tourist summer ever in Europe because I guess like maybe after COVID I don't know if that had anything to do with it but it was crazy we had to book everything in advance and be super on top of things there was no like spontaneity really Mm -hmm. because you just couldn't because everything was booked so just be aware um, if you're going for nice sunny warm weather summer is great but just you got to be a planner you got to be on top of things you can't be doing things last minute because it is not going to work out for you okay so next question is how much time would you ideally spend in europe okay i would say if you're like bouncing from place to place every few days two weeks is plenty for that kind of vacation because you're going to be exhausted if you're trying to like go see a million different things, stay in a few days in each place. It's just going to be, that's going to be a lot. But if you're doing more of like a long-term, like have some sort of like long-term housing situation, for example, like when Hallie and I studied abroad, I felt like four weeks, four to six weeks was a good amount of time because in four weeks, at a time we had a home base and we could just like travel for weekends and then come back. That was much more doable Mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I saw this thing on Instagram or something where it was like the ideal vacation time is eight days, any more than that. And you're like feeling like you need a vacation from the vacation when you get home. And I feel like honestly, eight days is a good amount of time for Europe. It's close enough that you can travel there, get there and not waste an entire day on travel. So eight days, you can have a really, really good like European vacation. If you're going somewhere else, which I don't have a lot of experience traveling to like Asia or any of like South America even, or like some places that take a little bit longer to get to, maybe you'd want to do closer to two weeks, but I feel like eight days in Europe honestly is like plenty. Yeah, I completely agree. Next question. Do you have any travel staples in terms of gear, items of convenience, et cetera? I thought about this a lot. I'm like, I don't know. The things I thought of were packing cubes. I've recently got on the packing cube game and I love them. They make packing and unpacking, especially for trips where you're like moving locations pretty frequently. That's super, super easy. And then also investing in a good neck pillow and an eye mask. An eye mask, I feel like for sleeping on the planes is a game changer. I can link mine in the description or in the podcast notes because mine's really good. And Jackson has always hated neck pillows and said they're a waste. And then he tried using mine and was like, wow, this is actually amazing. I agree. My friends were all commenting on my neck pillow because it's so nice. I have like a nice memory foam one and all my friends were like, oh, that's so nice. Like I wish I had one like that. And I was like, yeah, it's so worth it. It really is. Um, Something else I would recommend is prune juice because they don't (laughs) sell that anywhere in Europe. And this is a story that hasn't been told yet. So I'm not going to get into it because you'll hear the full thing later. But I was on the hunt for prune juice for weeks and didn't find it until my last day there. So um, just maybe bring it with you if you think you might struggle with it, because that is a thing. Like I was talking to my friends about it and apparently it is a thing that when you go to Europe, you might need some prune juice. 
Okay, just to get but things going. on a similar note, I would pack Tums because you can have the opposite problem. Like when we went to Dominican Republic, we oh. yeah had the opposite yeah that's problem. true. So Tums are good for that. Prune juice good for stress constipation. <laughs> basically you just never know like anytime especially if you're there for like a long term trip a change in a diet like you wouldn't think it would affect things as much as it does but when you're getting like different mixes of nutrients that your body's not used to you never know what that's gonna do to you so just always be prepared for that yeah um another more practical thing is outlet adapters make sure oh, you're yeah. looking up idea. online um what kind of outlets <clears throat> the country that you're going to has because a lot of the ones in europe are very different from country to country so making sure you have that and then there's also different voltage levels in their outlets so a lot of times american like hair styling products or like hair really, straighteners or blow dryers yeah yeah um stuff like that like when you even if you do have an outlet adapter when you plug it into that there's like too much voltage so it will like fry your hair so there's also different adapters that you can put in that like adjust the voltage so it's not going to like overheat your products for example my blow dryer broke in Spain because it literally sparked and like almost got on fire because it was being like way too overheated. So I was really sad because it was my favorite blow dryer. But I found out that you can get things to fix that. So don't make the same mistake that I did and save your hair styling equipment. Okay, next one is best airline in your opinion. Um, okay. I think I mentioned this. I'm partial to Delta because Detroit's a Delta hub. I feel like their flights are really nice. They always have the TVs on the back, but their reward system is awful as of late. They've made some changes where it's really hard to get status now, which is just really annoying to me. So, but the best first class seat that is like generally agreed upon is Emirates and which I've never flown an Emirates flight, but they're the, like their first class, like lay down seat has it's like royal. I mean, you have your own little suite where you have like a door that fully closes. You get white tablecloth, multi-course meals. Like you can get, there's a shower on the plane. There's like a legitimate bar that you can go up and order a drink at. Like that's like the goal. I would, that's what I'm like saving up my points for to someday do that flight on that. I actually have a really funny story about Emirates because one of my friends that I was with in Spain, one of her good family friends, like her dad's best friend or something is a pilot for Emirates and she, they live in Abu Dhabi. Okay. Oh my gosh. And so my friend, when she was flying home from Madrid, she flew from Madrid to Abu Dhabi to see her family friend and they flew her first class on Emirates <gasps> to Abu Dhabi. Oh, and so she got gosh. like, I think it was like a six hour flight or eight hour flight. I can't remember how long it was from Madrid to Abu Dhabi, but she was like sending us videos the whole time. And like, it was insane. Yeah, She was like, it was the craziest experience ever. If you guys haven't seen like a YouTube video of someone like flying in this first class seat, you should definitely watch it because it's just wild. It will just rethink like think I'm just thinking about, you know, crammed up in my economy seat flying six hours over to Europe compared to like what that experience would be like. I'm like, wow. I would never want to get off. Oh, no. I know. I'm like, give me on the longest flight there is. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) I don't have too many experiences with different airlines, but I will say when I was coming back from Europe, our flight got canceled and I was flying American. And so at first that was like really frustrating to have it canceled because obviously you're in like a foreign country. You don't have housing arrangements and it got rescheduled to the next day. So we were like, okay, are we going to have to spend the night in the airport? Like we were like kind of stressed out, didn't know what to do. And American took such good care of us. They got us a hotel. They gave us three free meals. They put us on whatever flight we needed to be on for the next day. And they like literally took care of everything for us. So while it was like really annoying and inconvenient that it got canceled, they 
handled it in the best way possible. And I've also had a lot of flight experiences that they, the airline didn't help us at all. And it, that just like made it even worse, obviously. So it was refreshing and reassuring to know that okay if I ever book with American in the future and anything happens I know like they're going to take care of me and I don't have to worry about it and a little piece on that there's actually a law if you have a flight from Europe to America to the United States or vice versa and it gets canceled or delayed by more than 24 hours that you can just get straight cash back you just have to be persistent with those things but there are actually laws that hold these airlines accountable so just keep pushing and you should be able to get some money back so yeah okay next question if you were given a one-week trip free where would you go this is kind of bouncing off of like I want to go somewhere with a long flight so that I can take advantage. If it's free, if including my flight, I want like that full first class lay down seat. So I would go somewhere like Fiji, Bora Bora, New Zealand, like somewhere that's like far that I can take like full advantage of that long flight. And those are like three places I like super high on my bucket list that I really want to go to. Yeah, I have always wanted to go to Australia and New Zealand. So Mm -hmm. one of those for sure. But I also feel like those are places where if it's paid for, it would be somewhere where there's like a lot of activities and like excursions that I'd want to do. It wouldn't be somewhere that I would just want to like be in a resort and kind of like stay in the resort and just relax. Like if it's going to be paid for, I want to get my money's worth. I want to be doing as many things as I can. So I feel like those are very like outdoorsy adventure places that it would be fun to go to yeah agree okay next question this is a fun one they said love this podcast thanks girl or guy I can't remember (laughs) who said this (laughs) um they said can you guys each give your top 10 places you visited and why so Kelsey's gonna go first go ahead okay my uh, this was so hard. This was really, really hard. Yeah, and I like had to think about like, this for a while. Some of my answers kind of surprised me. And uh, yeah, so, okay, so I'll run through. I'll start at number 10 and just give a little blurb about each. But 10, I said Destin, Florida, which I haven't been there in a long time, but really good memories from honestly, like family spring breaks, like before Hallie was even born, like we went here and there's beaches are just like the most perfect white sand. And I just have like really good memories from there. So that's 10. Number nine, I said Budapest, Hungary. Um, Jackson studied abroad there. And so I went to go visit him. And so he like knew everything. So I feel like when you go somewhere with somebody that just like knows all the things that makes a place like 10 times better. Yeah. It's so nice having a tour guide. Oh yeah, absolutely. Budapest is also super, super affordable. Um, So it's a great place for like college students to go. And it's really a lot less touristy than other European cities. Um, Number eight, I said San Francisco, which I loved San Francisco. I know that's like a kind of maybe a hot take. People have like varying opinions about San Francisco, but we had such a good time there. Again, we have a good friend that lives there. So she was able to show us around, but It's like super close to the Redwoods. There's beautiful hiking, also really close to wine country. There's so much to do in San Francisco. The city itself in the Bay Area is so pretty. So I loved that. Seven, I said Dominican Republic. Uh, We went there for our honeymoon. Most beautiful water. Fruit is so fresh. The best banana I've had in my life. Their food (laughs) is delicious. The people are so great. Um, Great weather. So yeah, love that. Six, I said Nashville. I think we've talked about it enough. You guys know we love our Nashville country music. Good times always. Number five, I said Northern Michigan. Perfect summer weather, beaches, the most beautiful falls. They're so long, so the colors are so great. Those Lake Michigan sunsets, boating, you can't beat it. Number four, I said Colorado. Mountains, hiking, great running community out there warm and cold weather activities, lots of sunshine. Love it there. Number three, I thought really hard about, so I said Spain in general. I thought about like the different cities in Spain and I honestly just like could not choose. And I felt like my top 10 was just going to be full of Spanish cities. So I just lumped them all in one. But that's why I love Spain because each Spanish city that I went to is so different and has so much to offer. And then obviously like we talked about in our Alcala episode, we have 
just like the people there, you know, Spain will always have a special place in my heart. Number two, I had Paris food, Paris food or just French food in general is so good. Love the just like Parisian vibes and the culture of the city. I'm so excited to go back this May. And then number one, Switzerland. Could not get enough of Switzerland. Everything about it I was obsessed with. I feel like it was like Colorado on steroids. And it's just like my favorite place in the world. Most beautiful place I've ever seen. So that was good. Uh, right. That was a good variety. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, my number 10 is starting out in the U.S., but it's Chicago. I personally love Chicago. I'm such a big fan. I think it's beautiful and better than New York City, which also might be a hot take. I don't know, but I think it's way nicer. I love the lake views. Mm -hmm. The path, the like walking path that goes along the lake for miles is just like so ideal. I think that's amazing. And just, I don't know, just the ambiance of Chicago. I just think it's great. Maybe I'll move there one day. We'll Mm, see. City girl. Yeah. Um, Number nine was Grand Canyon or Phoenix. I was so young when I went there. I don't even know how old I was, like five or six. Yeah, you're pretty young. This was a great trip. I have just same with like what you said about Destin. I have such vivid memories for being there so young. And I just remember like the weather being so amazing Mm -hmm. and it being like so hot, but it like didn't feel hot. And I was so like mind blown by that. And also just like how pretty the Grand Canyon was. It was like so beautiful. Yes. So highly recommend. My number eight is Nashville. You knew that was going to be in my top 10. So we can just (laughs) skip over that. Um, number seven is London. So much history. It was so charming. So British. You just like you, you gotta love it. I mean, it's great. The food is so good. The only reason it's not higher is because the weather is not great. Um, it's usually cloudy, usually cold, usually rainy. So that's kind of a downer. But other than that, it's great. Number six was the Bahamas clearest water ever and the beaches are so nice so if you're looking for a nice tropical getaway you don't even have to go too far because it's Mm -hmm. basically florida so highly recommend also atlantis is so fun wait okay somebody told me atlantis closed down so i need to like check on that actually oh really that would be so sad if it's closed i'm surprised maybe that could be wrong i need to check on that but fact check yeah okay number five madrid spent the most time here it was amazing like kelsey said the madrid alcala area forever will have a special place in my heart that would be somewhere where i'm definitely going to go back Mm -hmm. i Mm -hmm. i love it so much there's so much even though i was there for a month that i didn't even get to explore so definitely need to go back Number four, Amalfi Coast. Mm. So amazing. So gorgeous. So quaint and cute. And it's the perfect romantic getaway. So if anybody's looking for a trip like that, go there. There's also lots of walking and hiking that you can do there. Just exploring little like side roads, which I think is so fun. I love a good adventure. I love like stumbling upon new things. So I thought that was fun. Number three is good old Ossian, Indiana, because that's where my grandparents' farm is. And that is where most of my, like, happiest memories are, like, as from childhood are there. So, honestly, some good family time just can't be beat. I love my family. I love spending time with them and spending time outside. As kids, we would like play in the corn bins and like go <laughs> four wheeling and swim in the pond and just play tons of games. So as far as like best places ever, that's got to be in the top three for sure. Yeah, um, Number two is Cabo, Mexico. I had the best week probably of my entire life there. So there's definitely going to be an episode coming for that week. I honestly don't know if it's ever going to be topped. Um, Wow. High standards. Oh, it was so great. Nicest beaches ever. So nice. Um, The landscape is just so beautiful. The locals were super friendly. The weather was just perfect every single day, all day. You can't beat it. 
Number one, well, actually, you can't beat it because number one is Lake Como, <laughs> which is actually the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Uh -huh. um, just, I mean, we've done a whole episode on this. Yeah. So you've heard me rave about it already, but it's amazing. So there you go. That's my top 10. Okay. And then, wait, Hallie, you have this on our outline that your honorable mention was San Diego, which oh, I yes. almost put that in mind too. So yeah, we got to give a little shout out for San Diego. Yeah, I did place. have like number 11 as San Diego because I did want to like throw it in there because it it's another because I thought about it when I was when I was thinking about like why I liked Cabo and because I was like the weather was so perfect it literally reminded me of San Diego's weather yeah yeah because it's just so pleasant all the time yeah. and that's just huge for me like if if it's a good weather day my mood is like oh, through same. the roof so I need the sunshine yeah for sure but also it's just beautiful like the ocean views are amazing there's so much to do there it's really cool yeah Okay, what's a country or city that you visited that you could realis realistically see yourself moving to? This one was really hard for me to think about because a lot of the places in the U.S. that I like always say like, oh, I think I would move here. I think I would move here. I literally haven't even been to. So right. I was like trying to think of places that I've been to and I couldn't stop thinking about Charleston, South Carolina, Ugh. which is like kind of random because we were we spent like a couple days there like yeah. so many years ago, but it was so cute. I and love Charleston. Yeah. I just remember like all the streets are like brick and like cobblestone and there's like horses and carriages. Like, I don't know. It's just so when you think of like charming, that's mm -hmm. Charleston. Like it's yeah. so cute. I always have said I want to move to the south, like somewhere warm and sunny. So yeah, I think but I won't let you be that far away from me. So I'd be close to Dylan. So maybe you'd have to move down to us. Yeah, rude. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So I thought about this too for like a second. And then I was like, oh, Switzerland, duh, I love it so much. I could easily <laughs> see myself living there. But then when I like truly think about it, I cannot be that far away from my family, at least like living there, like setting up roots and like settling down there. I don't yeah. think I could do long term. So then I was like, okay, I feel like Colorado is the closest thing in the US that is like Switzerland. And so I'm like a Midwest girl through and through, but if I would move out of Michigan's the best state in the Midwest. So if I'm moving anywhere else, it would probably be somewhere like Colorado. So dang, I can't believe you just dissed Indiana like that. <laughs> Sorry. It's not quite as good when it comes to like outdoor activities that I need in my life. What's better than the Monon trail? <laughs> I do miss the Monon. I miss the Monon. I love the Monon. I'm not going to lie. I do but, love the Monon. But there are better things. You're right. <laughs> okay. Um, where is somewhere you would want to go that your sister would give a hard pass? Okay. This was so hard for me because I truly feel like both of us are the type of people that would be down to go anywhere. And I doubt I could truly think of something that some place that you'd be like, no, absolutely not. But I don't know. I I was like, would you want to go to Japan, Vietnam, like somewhere like in Asia? That I would is like say Japan would be really cool to go to and Vietnam. It would probably be like further down my list. Like right. I have a lot of places that I would probably want to go to before that. Yeah. But if I had infinite travel funds, of course I'd want to go there. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that's like where I am too. But yeah, I know if I like... Vietnam and Japan are not like next on my list of places either, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I had a hard time with this one because I know you're like open to anything. Yeah, I'm a very open person, but okay. On when I was like writing down my notes for this episode, I wrote secret on this line because I didn't want Kelsey to see what I was going to say. But now I can't remember what oh I was gosh. thinking about. I've been waiting to see this <laughs> secret answer that you didn't want me to see ahead of time. I know. I'm like reading it. I'm like, oh my, sh like, what was I going to say? I really cannot remember. Because literally, oh, go oh my God, I do remember. I do remember. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Wait, can I guess? Yeah. Okay, Abiza? guess. No. Oh, oh, I would love to go there, though. Yeah. And see, that's someplace where I'd maybe be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. 
Okay, what was your actual answer? Um, my answer is an African safari. Are you kidding me? I would love to do that. Okay, I didn't know. I literally <laughs> no. Yeah, there are these people that I follow on Instagram that recently did that, and I literally followed and like saved the company that they went with because I'm like, I want to do this exact thing. I don't know. I feel like you're so like you do like adventure, but. I just like I didn't know if you'd like want to go to Africa like I I don't know wow do you know me at all I'm not maybe I don't (laughs) oh man okay so similar sort of question the next one is where is somewhere you don't want to travel or don't want to travel back to so I saw this I read this article recently about this guy who visited every single country in the world twice and he talked about like the guy was like why go everywhere twice and the the guy who did that was like because everywhere deserves a second chance you go somewhere once and you might have like a difficult travel experience that like leaves a bad taste in your mouth or just have bad weather or whatever it may be and so every single place deserves a second chance and so like I loved that and then yeah we kind of talked about somewhere you don't want to travel to it, you'd be hard pressed to find a place that I would say I absolutely don't want to go to. Um, I'd pretty much be open to anything. But thinking of all the places I've been, if there was one place where I'd be like, eh, I don't really care to go back there, Venice came to mind for me. We went to Venice in the summer and it was so crowded. It was so touristy. Wasn't blown away by the food. I have yet to like go to an Italian city that I'm just like, blown away by the food because I went to Milan and Venice and I just felt like neither one of those had like great food that I was able to experience but again I probably just didn't go to the right places so if any of you guys have been to Venice and like have this great Italian place that I need to try or whatever please let me know there's just many other cities in Italy I'd much rather go to if I'm going back for an Italian trip but what about you Hal? Uh, speaking of Italy, I said Milan. I feel okay, yeah. bad like hating on it because I was literally there for 24 hours. So I didn't even get to see that much to even like make a good judgment of this like huge city that I really probably saw a fraction of. But it just like didn't really stand out from what I saw. We went to like the main area. We saw the Duomo. We saw like the main downtown and walked around. And it was really cool, and I'm really glad I saw it. But besides that, there wasn't a lot of other things that I, like, felt like we missed out on or, like, other things that I'm like, oh, I need to go back so I can see that. There were also, like, parts that felt a little sketchier, areas that I Mm. felt a little unsafe that I, like, didn't really feel that way in other places that I've been to. So... Yeah, that's just what I would say about Milan, but we stayed nothing in like the, horrible happened, but we stayed in the sketchiest Airbnb when we stayed in Milan. So yeah, yeah we my did too. <laughs> Milan experience is not great either. There's a ton of cheap flights that can fly in and out of Milan. So if you're mm-hmm. doing that, don't feel like you have to like spend the day in Milan. Just go straight to Amalfi or Como or wherever else you want to go in Italy and just skip over on Milan, I think. Yeah, I agree. Okay, next question. Would you ever travel abroad during the holidays? For me, I would say definitely. One of my bucket list items is to go to like Northern European countries during the Christmas season and stop Mm -hmm. by all of the holiday markets. That is just such a dream for me because I love Christmas. I love the festivities. I love getting in the holiday spirit. And so I think those little like Northern German holiday markets or like anywhere to see the Northern lights has also been a huge Mm -hmm. bucket list thing for me. So I would love to see that like during the winter season for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with you about the Christmas holiday markets. Yeah. I literally just read something today about like talking about them and Yeah, I talked about how, so Vienna was the first place to do a holiday Christmas market and that dates all the way back to 1296. So there's so much history there in these markets and that's still ranked, that Vienna market is still ranked as like the top European Christmas market. So just a lot of history and so yeah, that'd be really cool to see. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, next question. Ever done a cruise? Would you prefer cruise over traveling a different way? 
So yes, we have done a couple cruises, great memories on our cruises. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the thing I'll say about cruises, it's so easy to get a cheap deal. They are constantly running good deals for cruises. So if you just want like a quick, easy, low maintenance, low amount of planning um, vacation, cruise is your answer. It's good for groups because there's lots of different things for people to do, but you're all still in the same area and it's going to be a good like leisure vacation. You're not really going to be able to get the true like cultural experience at all the port cities you go to that you would if you were there in those port cities for an extended period of time. But I would do the next cruise that I want to do would be like an Alaskan cruise or like a North Pole cruise or like a cold weather cruise where you can see like the wildlife and the glaciers and stuff like that because the only other cruises we've done are like Caribbean cruises. So I'd Mm want to do something different. Yeah, that would be really cool. And our parents went on an Alaskan cruise and that's like their, they say that's their favorite vacation they've ever been on. Mm -hmm. And my mom hates the cold. So for her to say that is like a big deal. Big time. um, Okay. I think cruises are great if you get bored easily or like Kelsey said, if you're not into planning because they kind of plan everything for you. So it's not very overwhelming versus like planning an entire seven day vacation on your own and trying to fill each day with something new that can be a lot, especially if you are planning for an entire family or like Kelsey said, for a group. Um, The one thing I would say is I feel like it's really good if you have young kids um, Mm -hmm. because you can kind of let them go do their own thing on the cruise and you know that they're not going to get lost because they're in a confined space. Right. Um, And also a lot of cruises have like a lot of like good kids programs and like a lot of activities for tons of different age groups so if you're a parent and you're ready to kind of let your kids do their thing and you want your own space and you can go off and do your own thing I feel like it's like a good vacation for that for sure yeah that's what our parents did with us when they got tired of us yes (laughs) well speaking of do you want to talk about do you want to do the next question Okay. Yeah. So favorite vacation memory from childhood. I said mine was the first cruise that I went on. And basically our parents told us for Christmas that we were going on a cruise for spring break. And so we were so excited because none of us had ever been on a cruise. So we were like talking about it for months leading up, like doing all of our planning and we're in line, like about to get our bags checked to get on the cruise ship. And in front of me in line, I see my best friend from school. (laughs) And I'm like, what the heck? What are you doing here? And she's like, well, we're getting on this cruise. And I'm like, no, I'm getting on this cruise. (laughs) And she was like, we're on the same cruise. And so we had no idea that our parents had planned secretly behind our backs for us they both, were to, be so on, both to be on this cruise. Yeah. Our parents are like sitting in the back, like we're the best parents ever, <laughs> which they were for that. That was top tier. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So then we get on this cruise and me and my friend are like hanging out, whatever. Well, if you've never been on a cruise and you first get on it, you have to do this like drill of, like emergency if the ship if anything wrong is happening on the ship like where you're supposed to go so you like do the drill and we're like going to our emergency safety zone and we're like walking down the stairs to get there and then Dylan and Kelsey see their best friends like our childhood family friends that are their age walking to the same safety zone so then we're like what are you guys doing here? (laughs) And so not only had my parents like got my friend on board, but they had also planned for for that entire family that we had like grown up with that had kids Dylan and Kelsey's age. They were also there and we had no idea. They plotted this so well. And so it ended up being the best vacation because we were like so surprised and we had our friends with us and it was just like such a great time. Yeah. I mean, surprises like that are just so great in general. So yeah, mom and dad pulled it off. It was a good one. That was, yeah, such a great trip. I was also going to say the, my second like uh, vacation from childhood that really comes to mind was the Phoenix Resort one and the Grand Canyon, that trip, which we talked about a little bit already. I don't know why. I mean, the Grand Canyon's beautiful, but yeah, that trip for some reason just 
that was a great great vacation and I think it's memories I that. just keep picturing the one picture of like me and Dylan running through like the grass yes and he's like that's chasing what... me I'm picturing and it too we because it looks so happy no that resort our little room was on like a golf course and so it was it was in Arizona which is desert but the golf course obviously was so green that yeah. it was just like this weird like fake world that like shouldn't <laughs> normally exist where the weather is this warm this nice and then the grass is so perfectly green that we were just literally like frolicking through the grass in our bare feet as just like young <laughs> kids and that's like core memory for some reason. yeah <laughs> we'll have to dig that picture up I don't know where that is yeah we'll find someone has it yeah <laughs> Okay. Um, next question. Do you plan to travel a lot even after you have kids? Will you bring the kids with you or not until they are older? Yes. Do not make me stop traveling, please. Even when <laughs> I have kids, I will be bound and determined to keep traveling. My thought is like the destinations don't have to be flashy when you have kids. Like, you know, just like Hallie and I were just talking about, you know, our favorite vacations were not the, I mean, the cruise not in the US, but it's like nothing crazy. There was no major, like, I think we drove to the cruise port, you know, like yeah, you didn't have we to did. take a flight and then Grand Canyon, Phoenix, like that's still within the United States. And these are just like core memories for vacations for us. Destin, Florida, spring breaks, you know, like, uh, you know, those are the kind of vacations we did growing up and we have such great memories from that. So yeah, even there's so many places in the United States that I haven't been that once I have kids, if I don't want to fly with them, okay, let's start doing stuff in the U S. And, um, I think the key is like, I want my kids to grow up, like being able to experience as many different places and cultures as possible. It just makes you like, not only appreciate what you have, but also just gain empathy and understanding for different ways of different ways of living. And, um, I think travel is very valuable for a child growing up. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think some of my biggest learning experiences throughout my childhood and even now have been when I've been put in situations or environments that I'm not familiar with um, and experience different people's ways of living. Um, so I think when I do have kids that that is going to be like something that I find extremely important and I, uh, experiences that I want them to have as well. I also think like camping and going to different state parks is like a great way to do it um mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be glamorous just like anything to get out of the house and give yourself a new environment I think that's like important so yeah, yeah for sure exactly. okay next question and this is our last one for the day we got some more but we don't have time to get to all of them so in our next Q&A episode we might get to some of the ones we didn't get to in this one but the last question is what do you miss most about home when you are traveling yeah I had to think about this one a lot too because to be honest I don't really find myself missing home that much like I, when I'm traveling but I guess I thought of just like public transportation which I'm so thankful that other places have public transportation easier access than we do here in the United States. But there is something about just being able to hop in your car and go run down to the grocery store for whatever you need or whatever it is like that you have to just like figure out the public transport and stuff in a foreign country to get wherever you need. There's just a lot more planning involved with everything. You can get a rental car. I've never done that in a foreign country. But yeah, I miss just I think that's like the main thing I miss. Yeah, I agree. I never really felt the necessity to have my car with me abroad, but right. it was nice getting home and just like turning on my music and having like time to myself in my car. It was like very refreshing when I came home. Yeah. But for me, I did not have to think about this at all. I knew instantly it was <laughs> good air conditioning and free Wi-Fi. Those are the two things Fair. I need to be happy. So oh, yeah, when I was air insane, conditioning is so oh, bad. It's we did not, not real have air conditioning. We didn't in my in the house that I stayed in 
um, when I studied abroad, there was no AC and it was over 100 degrees that summer. Well, you really were not missing out on much because even the places that did advertise that they had AC, it was like a box unit in the corner. So that McDonald's (laughs) AC, though, in Alcala was great. That is true, but that's because it's American. So they know how to do it. (laughs) Yeah. But also the Wi Fi, like, nowhere had free wi-fi like even the cafes that is like a given in the u.s if you go to a coffee shop they're gonna have wi-fi because that's what people do there they do work and they wouldn't even have free wi-fi to give people in a cafe and that just really aggravated me for some reason yeah well, also because well, i didn't work- have a data plan so i like yeah. needed it the cafe work culture just that's a very american thing too so like when people go in other countries to the cafe they like don't need wi-fi they're like we're here to talk with our friends. yeah so. i guess that's like we're just so addicted to our technology yeah. and being productive all the time so yeah okay but, well i think that's it yeah. yeah so if you guys liked this format of the q a let us know because yeah we do have a bunch of other questions that we didn't have time to get through so if you want us to do another one like this let us know um and maybe this sparked some more questions for you guys we're going back to like the normally scheduled content next week with like another city so um stay tuned for that but and make sure you guys let us know if you have any places that you're really looking to hear about or if you have any trips coming up and you want to hear about whatever place you're going to in particular, um, feel free to let us know and we'll be happy to change our schedule around a little bit for you guys. I was going to say, as you heard, my next trip isn't until April. So I think I need something to do. So let me either live vicariously through (laughs) you or yeah, just tell me just, I'll be there. (laughs) You'll be there. You're going to show up to their trip. (laughs) Yeah, probably. Don't give me too many details. Yeah, Kelsey might just be there at your hotel. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, I think that's it. All right. Uh, Have a great day, you guys. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye.